thank you everybody for joining. Uh, BMC here as we host a session with GuidePoint Security to really give you a, a, a view of uh, just how easy very bad things can happen in your organization around vulnerabilities and patch management and remediation. My name is Seth Corder. I'm with BMC Software. I'm an automation specialist. I've been with BMC for five years. Before that, I came from a large retailer in the Midwest uh, where I actually did a lot of this patching and the process around patching and the negotiation with the business and getting yelled at by security and, you know, spending five years every Tuesday in cab meetings being told, uh, you know, that uh, nobody wanted me to patch, but we had to do it anyway. So just very familiar with the pain. We know that it, there's a, a lot more to it than just pushing buttons and say patch this system. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, some of those dynamics. Um, and we've also brought GuidePoint Security. And uh, I'll kick it over to Brian here to do an intro. All right. And Brian Brush from GuidePoint. Um, we are a nationwide uh, managed services provider, consulting services, and then product resale, which is kind of what we're here to talk about today. Uh, also from GuidePoint is Victor, who's going to be doing all of the really hard work. Uh, but we, we've been, Seth and I have been having this conversation over probably more than a year now about the need to bridge the gap between what operations does and what security does. Um, so prior to GuidePoint, I was with a security product company. Uh, I spent time as a Fortune 500 security director. I spent time in the consulting world. Um, and kind of between the two of us, we've seen the challenges from both sides. And there really hasn't been a good solution to this point. Most organizations struggle with this. Most organizations are still failing miserably with trying to patch very, very basic things that they should be automating today. And so that's kind of what we're here to talk about. Yeah, so a lot of people look at this slide and I, I never like to approach talking about this from the fear, uncertainty, and doubt point of view. Um, this is a very true statement. There are two kinds of companies, the ones who know they've been breached and the ones who haven't realized it yet. I, I also like to say there are two kinds of companies, the ones who are doing the basics and who are reducing that likelihood and the ones who are not. And the ones who are not sit in the much larger pile than the ones who are. I think, you know, for those of you in the room who are in-house somewhere or who consult with organizations, you see this day after day after day, um, where companies are trying to do the new and cool things and at the expense of maybe some of the things that are harder because it's more about getting the organization to work together to fix problems. Um, what we're talking about today is absolutely not cool. Uh, it's basic, fundamental building blocks of either your operations or your security program, uh, but it's something that everyone in your organization knows you need to do and that your auditors, regulators, you know, internal audit, your board, everyone is expecting you to do. Uh, so we're really trying to find a good way to have an automated solution because, as you'll see, the attackers are already automated. They're automated. They have all the time in the world you're not automated, and you have limited time and limited resources. So what do you do with that? So here's another quote here from the NSA. Uh, essentially what they're saying is the, the way they're going to get you is the path of least resistance. Um, for those of you, you see all the sales guys and the security companies putting out LinkedIn messages saying, new exploits out there, it's a zero day, it's worse than Heartbleed, it's worse than this. Um, you know, and so everybody jumps and they focus on that one thing in, in a very reactive way and they try to eradicate it in their environment and they move on to, to other things. What he's saying here is known vulnerabilities are often the way in which the bad guys are getting into your environment. They're not necessarily going after the advanced stuff. They're looking for the easy stuff. And to, you know, to really kind of illustrate that point, the, this, this statistic right here for 80%, that's from the Ponemon Institute in 2014. What they're saying there is 80% of the breaches that were reported, uh, or of all the breaches reported, 80% of them said there was a known vulnerability used in the attack stream. Okay, a known vulnerability. And a known vulnerability is something that's public knowledge on how to exploit it, how to use it. There's probably videos on it. There's pro it's probably built into the bad guy's automation tools to make it easier for someone to go and exploit that. So that's what known means. We know about this. Uh, it also means 99.9% .9 of the time we know how to fix it. It's something that can be fixed. Uh, generally speaking, within 24 hours, 99% of these have patches available for these known vulnerabilities. So again, just to emphasize, 80% of the potential attack surface that's being used in some way during those who have, uh, for those that have been exploited, have been using known vulnerabilities, 99% of them are fixable. Does that sound like we're missing something? Something's absolutely missing, if that's true. Go for it. 
So, you know, and we, I, I had a little bit of heartburn with this image initially, but when you think about it, uh, this is how most security administrators feel now, right? The, the attack surface is overwhelming, and the 80% that Seth references, if you can wipe out 80% of that, then you can take your highly specialized resources, your highly specialized tools, those really expensive people that you can't hire. You know, anyone who's trying to hire security professionals right now knows how hard it is, how expensive it is, and how easy it is to lose them to someone else. So if, if you're not automating and you're not focusing on taking care of everything in a routine manner that is possible and then using those expensive resources and tools in the focused manner to protect the things that you can't fix or the things that you know it's going to take you six months to fix or a million dollars to fix or whatever the reason is, right? You want to focus your detection efforts there. You don't want to be spending your time focusing it on everything when you could be fixing some of those things and then not worrying about them anymore. Uh, most, most companies sort of overlook the forest for the trees in this, in this aspect. I mean, I've, I've been doing this for 15 years now, and it's the same problem now as it was 15 years ago, even though we're light years ahead in speed, tools, bandwidth, capabilities, everything. We still haven't solved this very basic problem. Uh, earlier, Brian mentioned, you know, patching wasn't cool. Heard a little bit. I patched for a lot of years for a big retailer. And uh, as we kind of talk about this, I, you know, I have a I have a emotional reaction to just the chaos uh, that it actually was living and breathing in this you know ops versus security and ops versus business and you know this just it's just a grind. It's it's very very difficult to do and there's lots of reasons for it. Um, you know, but he said patching is not cool. I think this is way less cool. The fact that it takes on average 193 days to eradicate a vulnerability, a known vulnerability in your environment. Now, there's a lot of factors that play into that. There's a lot of reasons. For that, depending on who you ask now, I, th I think that statistic was in 2014. I think most people feel it's higher. It, it's, it's higher than 193 days at this point. But there's reasons for it, and I think we gotta, we got to acknowledge some of those reasons for it um, because I think they're valid, but I think we've got to stop making excuses for a lot of those reasons, right? We've got to uh, really be focused on, on patching, patch execution. And just so some of the examples, you know, the regulatory standards that many of you are probably under um, may be a higher priority or the process in which we're monitoring and tracking known vulnerabilities is more important than the remediation of that vulnerability. Like that's priority number one. I don't ever have time to go back and remediate it. That's usually a, a, big, a big challenge. Um, but we sure can document it. Right? We can document it so they don't sue us. And we don't you know, go to jail. We, we're going to document it so we're not negligible. So kind of attitudes like that. And, and then visibility is a huge problem. Um, you know, one example, and they'll get into this in the demo, is I said, back before the IT shop I was in was really huge, the security guys sat across the cube wall for me and literally would hand over the vulnerability scan report to me and say, have at thee. <laughs> Where do I start? I'm an ops guy. I don't even know what a CVE is. Right? That's, that's you. I need, I need to know where to begin. And I have a million other priorities as an operations person, so you know what? If, you, if, if I'm not held accountable to that and neither are you, then I'm not going to do it. So there's some of those dynamics at play. Um, and th there's a lot of other things, but just we're really framing up the existence of this gap, this really hard thing that people have struggled to overcome. And we think that we have a solution that makes that a lot easier. You're going to see that in the demo. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it later. Um, and then I'm sure your, your rep will talk to you more about it uh, even more afterwards. Well, and, and to follow up on that, speaking the same language, right? So, so Seth is a former ops person. He spoke patches and uptime. And his customer was the business who wanted their patches applied in the minimum amount of time possible so they had the greatest uptime. Security people speak exploit and threat and vulnerability and risk and all of these things. And there's not a good common language because they have two entirely different customers. They have divergent goals. And, and there's the you know, desire at the end of the day. Most of these companies are in business to make money doing something, not spend time doing either ops or security. So it, it, it's really making sure that they're not skipping the fundamentals, which is negating any of the other work that you do. If you skip a couple of these easy things, then it, all of the very expensive and difficult things that you've done, you can almost throw those out the window. You might as well not have spent that money at all. Uh, and, that, and that's really the problem that we're trying to solve. So we're just about at the demo here, and then uh, Brian and I will, will step over here. Uh, but why we think this is still a problem is Forbes Insight did a polling of uh, executives in uh, Europe and in North America, 
And you could see a couple statistics here that they're still worried about this. This is still going to be a problem. They're still spending money on it. And so we kind of want to just give you a different perspective on how this whole thing could be made easier. It doesn't solve all the problems, uh, but it certainly eliminates some of those age-old 20, 30-year-old excuses that we've been using as reasons why we can't patch. Um, so uh, before we get into the demo, the hackers, like we talked about before, they're very automated. You're going to see that. They got more tools than probably IT does. In some cases, they're funded better. Right? So they've got all these different tools. Um, you know, after a, after a company's breached, you, you listen to their PR statements. They're always talking about, oh, it was an advanced persistent threat that got us and all that stuff. And if you really dig into the details, um, you realize it didn't start advanced. It likely started with a known vulnerability. How, how th I mean, that's not sophisticated. That's the opposite of sophisticated. Um, the door's kind of left open. So we think a maniacal focus on patching, compliance, and remediation of, of vulnerabilities is the right area to focus. We think that's, that's where uh, our customers and everybody in the room should focus there uh, first, uh, or at least make some intentional priority of doing that and the benefits you'll see on all the other cool stuff uh, that all the security analysts and everybody else want to be doing, it makes that easier. They're actually going to get to do that.